What's up, guys? We got an advanced OU game between two excellent advanced players uh, in Markop and Triangles. Triangles has been around for a long time. Markop is newer on the scene, but anyone who knows the tier will know that these guys can play, and they're not afraid to really uh, explore the depths of the tier. So it's very likely that we're going to see something interesting in this one. So let us begin. Uh, we're already starting off, interestingly, because uh, Triangles leads off a Selby, which realistically means that it's going to be subseed. Not that you couldn't use other sets like uh, Offensive Calm Mind, but in this day and age, for the last several years, that's what your uh, lead Celebi is generally going to be running. And uh, Markov's bringing Hariyama, who loves to knock shit off, uh, whether it's offensive or defensive. However, uh, it's not going to knock against a possible subbing Celebi. That will get Celebi the initiative. You don't want to give it that from the first turn of the game. So defensive would probably go for Whirlwind there. And offensive uh, would just attack, so Triangle's knowing that it's probably not going to be knocking off turn one, goes to his men's to scout that out. Uh, but I think if he was sub, it was probably safer to use it there. Uh, so, you know, it, he could uh, very well not have it. Uh, he also is slower than the Zapdos that came in to check the men's. Uh, not a counter, but a good initial pivot. And uh, Subseed Selby tends to be pretty fast, and Toxic Zapdos tends to be not slow, but generally slower than 300, which is what uh, Selby tends to run, uh, unless it's Timid Dual Status, so that's something to keep in mind. And the way the Slow Pass uh, succeeds in getting Snorlax in without taking any damage, and he fires off an Earthquake, looking for a Tyranitar or Metagross to come and switch it. Instead, Markov goes to Hariyama, which takes a pretty notable chunk. And uh, Markov then doubles to the Tyranitar uh, on the Salamence. So he wants to get Sand up and cut off that Mets' leftovers, as well as Celebi and Snorlax. That will help out, well, Zapdos mainly, uh, assuming he can get by the Celebi somehow. But uh, HP Ice outside of Sand isn't as big a threat. HP Ice in Sand is a huge threat. World of difference. Uh, so here comes my Lodic as... Uh, the Tyranitar also, generally if it's a physical tar, it's going to lose to Mens one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, this team structure, Celebi, Snorlax, uh, Mens, Milotic, generally suggests physical offense. So, uh, it's he's not going to want to toss away a sweeper, or not even toss away, just take so much damage from a minus one rock slide. And Markov isn't even attacking with rock slide, he's got ice speed, he would have got the cold hard Oko. So, Triangle decided to uh, play it safe and go to his hard counter, Milotic. Generally... Melodic is not a hard transfer counter, it can really flounder against the physical shit, but against the uh, mixed special attacking stuff, there's nothing better. And at minus one, there was no fear of getting walloped by a, a rock slide. So, uh, he's going to fire off Hypnosis, miss the first, hit the second. Hypnosis battle is generally really nice against these offensive teams, because once it finds its way in, then, well, first of all, uh, that crit stings really hard, but look at how much that would have done without the crit. Milotic's 236 special attack set is actually really difficult to uh, switch into more than a few times uh, for offensive teams like this that don't have Snorlax. So, and that's uh, quite a lot of them. Snorlax, Celebi, so. Even the Ice Beams can really sting Celebi. But uh, this is going to be the dual status variant if it's got Hypnosis. Gotta add that Toxic, can't be helpless against Suicune once uh, Sleep Closet is up. So, um... He's going to run away, go into Celebi, and that is HP Ice, as you see. World of Difference. If it's getting leftovers on these two turns, then it's not as in much danger as it is with the Sand. So that was a really good move by Markov earlier. Uh, as that pops off, and... Um, yeah, Hypnosis Milo is also good. Not just... Well, Milo in general is good against offense because it's you know hard to kill, and it also... Uh, it hits pretty hard, but the Hypnosis really just adds another dimension to it, because then even if you do have that Snorlax, that gets slept, and that's really not good. So he's going to slow pass on the unexpected HP Ice. Um, Markov hit it well earlier. And that means Snorlax is going to lose about a quarter of its health as it takes the Zapdos out. Not sure he had to really uh, sack it to get that extra damage. I um, think he might have wanted to go to Tar immediately, but we'll see. So Tar is not going to um, stay in. It's going to go to Suicune. As uh, that was a that was a weird one because 
Well, I, uh, Suicune into Milo would generally suggest something like sub that just completely defecates all over Milo. But uh, Triangle's probably is running a not a not a de physically defensive uh, offensive Snorlax, but like a, a set with a lot of physical defense, so it doesn't insta die to Dugtrio, and also isn't terrified of uh, Rogue Tyranitar rock slides. So he was just really uh, trying to chunk that Tyranitar for as much damage as he could. Uh, also because um, he would probably want to damage it for a late game DD Men's Sweep, because full health Tyranitar with max HP does live a plus one Earthquake. And if it's one of the specially defensive DD Salamences that tries to live uh, Ice Beams from Hurt and Milo and sometimes Glissy and like Ice Punches from Bulky Gar, then you'll want all the chip you can get. So this is a, it is going to fire off a Rock Slide though. Um, he also may have been thinking, well, this Tyranitar can't actually hurt me. It's one of those, uh, you know, crunching Fire Blast, Ice Beam, HP Grass sets. Which, you know, I think it's likely that it would be running Brick Break over Crunch, but it's not the most unreasonable assumption. Basically, he could probably, uh, you know, get that Earthquake off, make it stick, take advantage of it somehow, and then still get use out of Snorlax after. Got some information on the tar, and the Rock Slide on the same set as Ice Beam generally means DD Ice Beam. So, um, Milotic is going to switch out of there, not wanting to risk any substitute shenanigans. And uh, he's going to get into Snorlax, which eats a massive Hydro Pump and then blows up. So, uh, talk about not afraid of Substitute. Um, well, because he was... Because I, I don't want to believe that he was Surf Hypnosis Ice Beam. That's, that's just not a good set. Um, it's, it's totally helpless against so much once Sleep Claws is up. Whereas Toxic is part of what makes Milotic so threatening. Um, and, you know, Hypnosis Refresh, no, he's gonna have a mag, especially, uh, once he reveals Metagross, and, uh, yeah, that's, so, it's, it's gonna be toxic, so he must have just really been fearing, uh, the sub, which would also mean that Selby would not be able to check it at all, assuming it was a more defensive Leech variant, uh, or slower defensive Leech variant, because there are fast sets out there, um, fast defensive sets out there. Anyway, so we see uh, Mash Miss and an EQ Chris. So that was a, that was a horrible turn. Um, you know, kind of something for the Zapdos crit earlier. Although I'm not sure that's quite on the same scale. But uh, with yeah, so let's just say that was a really bad turn. So he's then forced to go to Milotic. Although uh, not sure he could. He had to risk Metagross. Although although that's that's kind of stupid to say in retrospect. You know, like oh yeah, you you totally shouldn't have risk the Metagross, you know, because what if you miss Mash any Earthquakes? So, um, that, that would have been for someone playing super safe, but I mean, look, Metagross, if that connects, that's, uh, that's really, really nasty, so, here goes to Magneton on the, uh, clear Calm Mind Jirachi. I mean, it could be, like, a mixed Body Slam variant, but let's just assume Calm Mind until, uh, you see otherwise, because that's the more common and usually immediately pressing set. So, uh, he goes to Magneton and Calm Mind and uh, presumably goes for a Thunder Wave. So why that's really good is because generally uh, Jirachi will not have Fire Punch and Ice Punch on the same set. There is a set that uh, has both and it's got Grass and Last. It's the Stabless one, but it's very rare. So it's And at this point he doesn't have many better options. So uh, losing Magneton is a lot uh, less bad. Uh, because it means that Salamence can DD on it after, and as you can see, he's packing some really big special defense investment from how well he took that plus one psychic. So uh, he's going to get that dance off, and the Dug Trio is not going to be a check to it whatsoever. It's it's looking like a sweep, and basically, it, um, if he sacks Mence and or if he loses Mence to Ice Punch and then T waves it, then you know he's still kind of boned. Because uh, he could have gotten use out of the mess because it's insanely threatening. But, you know, if Magneton dies, then this happens. So it's uh, it's really, that was a really smart move. I, it was kind of the only thing he could do. But, you know, there's some people who would have uh, tried to just figure out the Jirachi set based on XYZ thing. Like, and a lot of that is just rationalizing. Well, you know, he's not that safe against Flygon, so he's got to be Ice Punch. Or, uh, you know, he's not that safe against whatever stupid thing. And... A lot of that can be guesswork, so Triangle's uh, made the right move by uh, staying safe uh, and accounting for the whole situation. And, if, you know, at that point, if he's Fire Ice Grass, there's nothing you're going to do anyway, so 
and uh, the Mets is just going to clean up. So um, a couple points of interest in this game. Uh, that Tyranitar was very likely plus speed because you can't be getting revenge by Starmie in this day and age. And you don't, you just blow by Gengar. And uh, so that means that the Metagross also could have been jolly if it was outrunning it because um, with a sleeping, I, I think it's, uh, I'm kind of wondering if Markov could have gotten more use out of using the sleeping Hariyama as a sack against Know, something I don't know, but um, and another point of interest is uh, the teams. Uh, Markov's running a generally good bulky offense team. Uh, you know, a little sketchy and in its coverage against you know some faster Pokemon, but that's offense for you. You just gotta play smart and with foresight and dance around them. And uh, he's not gonna be struggling much against defense if he plays well because Hariyama messes shit up, uh, and he's got the dog to zero in on the important targets. Uh, what I like about Triangles' team is it's just it's solid physical offense. You know, you got the mag. It's enabled by several Pokemon. You're going to be abusing the hell out of the opponent's team in 16 different ways uh, with lots of different options uh, with, you know, your big guns here once uh, the Skarm's out of the way. And, you know, Celebi's going to help soak against uh, Willow's Gengar shit. And uh, DD Mence is super underrated uh, nowadays. I, it's kind of like um, there used to be this thing I used to say that was like, Moltres is everyone's favorite, most underrated Pokemon in Vans. I think now it's shifting to DD Mence. Everyone loves to say how underrated it is. But it, it's really good, as you can see. Because uh, Mix is, you know, really easy to use. But DD is just a, it's a game ender. And against teams like this, where, you know, the uh, defensive coverage on stuff isn't as great, you know, if it's faster, like Arrow or Starmie or something, then, you know, DD Mence is one of the most no-nonsense uh, weapons against it. So I thought that was interesting and worth noting. Uh, Alright, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, well done to both battlers. You've made this an excellent viewing of a game. And I will catch you all next time.